Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a hot minute since I've done a petty with me and I am now post-wedding, post-honeymoon, about to go on a beach vacation next week and my toes are in serious need of some attention, some TLC, a fresh coat of paint. But I recently got a bunch of new polishes from OPI. This month they launched a Nature Strong line, which is a line of vegan plant-based polishes. It's their first origin nail lacquer, which provides up to seven days of wear and shine. It's free of animal-derived ingredients. Again, it's vegan. The cap and bottle are made with 20% post-consumer recycled materials, which is amazing. And I believe they launched with 30 new shades. So I have these two right here, and I'm just a sucker for light pink on my toes. It's like the only color Color I really like to use. So I think I'm gonna try this one today. While I film this petty, I'm gonna answer a bunch of the questions that were submitted via Instagram. I recently asked you guys to ask me anything related to the wedding, related to work, related to nails, related to books, makeup, fashion, whatever it may be. So I screenshot all those questions and I'll be answering them throughout this video. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm beyond excited. Before we begin, I need to remove my old polish. I feel like I gotta show you it. I always forget this part, but here are my lovely toes, they're nice and dry. They're all chipped, they're peeling. These are all scabs from my flip-flops running around Jamaica. This was my wedding pedicure. I used OPI Infinite Shine, it's a girl. Honestly, one of my favorite petty colors of all time. I do it all the time. Um, but today we're gonna be doing this one right here. This light pink. I'm not sure what it's called, but let me pull it out real quick so you can see. This is in the shade, a clay in the life. Very clever. I feel like this is gonna be gorgeous on the toes. Okay, back in your spot. When I film petty videos, I just like to look at the camera. I feel like it's more of a hangout sesh as opposed to like a tutorial. So I wanna look at you. I don't feel like you need to look at my toes. <laughs> Again, I always mention this, but if you're looking for a full pedicure tutorial, there are a few on my page. So go check out my channel for those if you're looking for more step-by-step -step instructions. But today, we're gonna be a little more laid back. We're just gonna chit chat, I'm gonna answer your questions, and it'll be fun. I had my really cute denim shorts on before, but when I sit to film these videos, it puts me in a compromising position. So I just changed into sweats. It's a little easier to actually move my feet as well. I never use the Olive and June box to prop my foot up like I'm supposed to. Maybe I'll try that today. I also just got an email from a company that makes like a footstool for pedicures and it has a little light attached. It was really cool. I emailed them back, so we'll see if that ends up being something that I try out and share, but anything to make the petty easier. As you get older too, it's like way harder to hunch over and paint your toes, but I haven't gotten a pedicure in probably well over a year at this point. I think I went for my birthday last year with my mom because we like to get petties on our birthdays, but that was it. I've been doing them myself. I kind of prefer to do my own nails and toes these days. Uh, nobody's touched my nails in years. I'm a little particular about that. I'm using a non-acetone remover, which is why it's taking a little longer. They're better for your nails, and I use enough acetone on my fingers when it's gel time, so. I feel like I should start answering some questions because before you know it, this video is gonna be over. Let me pull out my phone and I'll start going through those. I got a few wedding questions, but I'm planning to do a full wedding video, so I'll answer a couple of the popular ones that came in, but if you have any questions related to my wedding, feel free to leave them in the comments because once I start getting photos and videos back and have time to like fully digest the wedding and sort through all of my images, I do want to put together a full video and maybe a blog post just because it was such an amazing day and there was so much beauty to be seen and to be shared and I would love to recap it all here just so I have it for my own personal memory as if I'll forget, but... <laughs> It's always nice to relive it. That's one of my favorite things about having a YouTube channel and writing a blog is that I can go back years and years and years and relive really special times or events or moments that I captured and that I shared. It seems sort of silly at the time, but you don't realize that you are creating almost a digital journal and it can be a really special thing to have. I also wanna take the opportunity to shout out all of my incredible vendors in that video. There were just so many fabulous people that brought that day to life and they deserve to be recognized in every way, shape, and form. So I wanna make sure that I properly do that as well. Okay, grab my phone and I'll pull up these questions as I am taking care of business. Okay, here we go, I screenshot. First question, do you ever do other people's nails and how and why did you start doing your own mani pedis? Great question. Once in a while, I will do other people's nails, never their toes, except my mom. Once in a while, I'll, 
I'll do her toes, but I don't like doing people's toes. But not so much anymore. When I lived with my girlfriend Lauren, I would do her nails a good amount of the time. Um, and then when I lived at home for a bit, I would do my mom's and sister's, but that's really it. With makeup and nails, and hair for that matter. I've had people ask me so many times over the years if I would do their hair or makeup for, you know, certain events or special occasions, and I never want to say no, because I know I can do it, but I'm certainly not a professional, and it's one of those things where I know what works for me, but what works for me doesn't always work for other people, so I'm very confident doing my own hair, makeup, nails, etc. But when it comes to working with other people's, it's a different experience. So I do do it, but it's not my favorite thing to do. And then the second part of that question was, why did you start doing your own manis and pedis? Um, I have always done my own manicures and pedicures. When I was in seventh grade, I don't know why I vividly remember seventh grade, but this was maybe the year that it really stuck out to me. I would paint my nails every night before bed to match my outfit for school the next day. Like, obsessed. My first manicure I think was in the third grade. My girlfriend Kelly and I went for her birthday and I got a neon yellow mani. For my 16th birthday, my best friend's mom always had her nails done so nicely and she took me to her salon and got me silk wraps, like tips, and that was the coolest thing ever. And then when I was really young, I remember always just wanting to work at Claire's or Payless, which were the stores I would always go to because the girls always had really nice long nails. And a lot of times they had their index finger cut off so they could work with the keyboard. Um, but I just thought that was the coolest thing. I was obsessed with the sound of clacking nails. I loved how they looked. I just felt like it was the coolest thing. So I always had an obsession with them. I've always done them myself. And once I got my gel kit, I think back in 2012 was when I started doing my own gel manicures. I think, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was the time. That's when gel manicures were becoming incredibly popular and I went to get one. And after I got it, I remember thinking, I could have totally done that myself and I really didn't love the way the woman painted my nails. I had been painting my nails prior to that with regular polish, but she flooded the nail bed. I remember reading up on gel a lot and just knowing the, the do's and don'ts and I didn't think this woman had done a really good job. It was hard for me to even find a salon that offered gel at that time. I think it was the shellac and uh, so I immediately went home and ordered my own kit and back then you couldn't get the regular polishes. So I ordered this like OPI kit. It came with a bunch of pods with different colors and the base and top coat and you had to apply it with like a paintbrush. It was pretty legit actually. But then I found Gelish and have been absolutely in love with their products ever since. I guess that's kind of my Manny story. That would be a fun video to tell like my full love of nails. I feel like I should write that down because it is kind of random, but it's truly a passion of mine and it always has been. Okay, next question. What nail dryer do you have? Um, I actually don't have a dryer. I just have a UV lamp, which I use for my gel manis and they don't even sell it anymore. They don't make my lamp. I've tried to find it. I've tried to link it. I don't even know if they make the replacement bulbs. I haven't bought replacement bulbs in years, so one of these days I'm sure they're gonna blow, at which point I'll probably need to get a new lamp. But in my research looking for new lamps, the Sun UV have incredible reviews and have been recommended to me many times by other gel users. So if you're in the market for a UV lamp, I would suggest checking that out. They have a ton of different versions on Amazon. Do you work for yourself? full time. Yes, I do. My family does have a small business that I help out with like one day a week. I just kind of do the payroll and help my mom out with some things. But every other day of the week is spent here doing this. And I'm not just an influencer or YouTuber. I actually create content for a variety of different brands and companies for them to use exclusively on their social sites. So I don't even feature the majority of the content I create because it's being shared on other platforms and other pages. I actually kind of prefer doing that just because it's a little less pressure, I guess you could say. This space has changed so much over the years. Instagram, YouTube, like it's really not what it used to be. It used to be so much more fun. And now it's just profit driven. It's just used as a marketing tool. No one really uses any of these accounts for fun, which is kind of sad because it really was a good time way back when. I don't know, it's just become a huge industry, which I mean, it's benefited me, so I don't want to complain about it. But at the same time, it's really changed the landscape of our culture and I don't think for the best 
to be honest. There's a lot of things about the way our life is now that I don't like. So I don't know. I've been working on my product. I like to do the behind the scenes work. And I'm trying to figure out where this is going to take me in the next two to three years. What drew me to this kind of career from the get go was the freedom, the freedom to manage my time, the freedom to manage every hour of my day, not having to answer to anyone. I have a little bit of like an authority issue. I don't know how to explain it, but I have a really hard time being instructed and told what to do, which I think most people do, but it was really hard for me to work for someone just because of like my personality, but there are definitely aspects of a full-time job that I miss and I really do miss, you know, coworkers and friends and some of the social aspects, but I really do love what I do and I'm so grateful for the opportunities it's provided me and we'll see where it takes me. Next, did you freehand your French Manny or what did you use to get it so perfect? So this is the French Manny. I'm actually still wearing it so you can see. I shared it on my Instagram as well. I am obsessed with these nails, like absolutely obsessed. So I went to Sally's last week and bought white sticker strips to help guide painting a French Manny. And then I got a new sleek white or chic white, I'm sorry, I always call it sleek white. Yeah, chic white polish from Jellish so that I could try to do a French manicure. My mom had been getting these beautiful dip French manicures leading up to the wedding. Um, and my sister got one as well. And I was just loving everyone's French manis. The style has made a huge comeback lately and I just am seeing them everywhere. So I was like, you know what? It's been years since I gave myself a French manicure. Let's give this another go. So I bought those strips and I used them on one finger and honestly found them a little messy. So I decided to try to freehand it. And I'm gonna be honest, freehanding was so much easier than I thought it would be. And I absolutely love how it came out. This is probably my favorite manicure in a very, very long time. It just came out so beautiful. It was so much easier to do than I thought it would be. And it has been holding up surprisingly very well. So to create it, a bunch of people had asked if I would make a video and I may next time I do one, but to do it, I just painted two coats of foundation onto my bare nails, the gelish foundation. And then I freehanded two coats of the chic white on the tips, obviously curing between every coat and it came out great. It really did. I'm so, so happy with the results. And I don't know, I just feel very fancy. Huge fan. Go-to perfume. This is a good question because I haven't been wearing perfume very much lately. In recent years, for whatever reason, I've just run out and haven't repurchased. But one of my all-time favorite perfumes, I think it's called Butterfly. Scratch that. It's actually called Dreams, but it comes in a bottle with a butterfly on the top by Mariah Carey. It smells so good. It's probably, probably my favorite. I also love CK1. I love Clinique Happy, all the 90s perfumes. And then there's one that my mom bought me a few years ago, Bella by Vince Camuto, which smells really good as well. And that one I always see at TJ Maxx, which is nice because it's fun when you can pick up perfumes at those stores because they're always a little cheaper. Tell us all the wedding details. This is something that I think I'm going to do in the wedding video. So if you have any specific specific wedding questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer all of them in that video because I can't wait to talk about it and I can't wait to share it with you guys. There's really so much to share. It was just honestly the most incredible day. That's the only way that I can put it. It was perfect. Everything about the day was perfect. The weather was insane. It rained nearly the entire month of July in Connecticut, like just rained. And our wedding weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, was perfect. Like the best weather that we've had the entire summer. It rained Memorial Day weekend. It rained 4th of July weekend. It just rained. And this weekend was, like you couldn't have asked for better weather. It was just gorgeous. Our flowers were gorgeous. Our venue was gorgeous. Our officiant was just so, so incredible. We had a tented wedding. It was beautiful. I just, I can't wait to talk about it and share the photos. If you do follow me on Instagram at underscore Amanda Bell, I tried to share some things over there, some sneak peeks, and I did make a highlight bubble. 7 24 21, which was our wedding date, if you want to go take a peek at that. I posted a bunch the morning of our wedding, and then the next day, I just reposted everything and anything I could, just because I wanted it to archive. I wanted to have everything archived on my Instagram so that 
I could take the time to look back at it at a later date and just have it forever. It's hard because I didn't pick up my phone like once. Well, not on my wedding day. Once my hair and makeup was done, my phone was gone. Like I did not see it the rest of the day. I left it in the bridal suite for our whole wedding and that was it. I completely tuned out, but everybody else was capturing what was going on. So it was so fun the next day to go through everybody's stories and posts. I was a little annoying with all my reposts, but again, I just wanted them to archive. I wanted to have them so that I could always look back and relive that day through the eyes of our guests. Next question. Just purchased Jellish Structure Gel. Trying first time. Did you try it before? I bought, where is it? No, I still haven't tried the Structure Gel. I bought this, the Nail Strengthener, which I really didn't like. I don't know if I used it wrong, but it was not my favorite. So let me know how you like the Structure Gel. That is from Ivana. I've heard only great things, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Okay, next. Is there anything you would have changed about your wedding? I don't know if this is something I should save for my wedding video, but I'm just gonna answer it now. Overall, no. But one thing I will mention um, was my hair. I didn't love my hair. I knew I wanted to wear it down because I just never feel great when it's up. When I went for my trial, I did a completely different hairstyle and I really didn't like it at all. I did like it, I just didn't like it for my wedding day. So the day of my wedding, we like totally went in blind. I gave her inspo pictures of what I liked and I do think she did a really nice job, but a part I didn't love was that we were outside for the entire reception and we did all of our photos outside. So the wind and everything just got a little like scraggly and knotty and I had these pieces that were hanging down in the front that I really wanted. It just kind of like separated. I don't know how to explain it. So I didn't love my hair, but I still felt really just special and beautiful on my wedding day. So it wasn't a complete make or break, but I probably would have changed my hair. And it's hard when you do your own hair and makeup because you know what you like. If you're really not used to doing it, like whatever they do is gonna be gorgeous because you just never do it. So obviously the professionals are gonna kill it. And I loved my makeup. I do love what they did with my hair, but after she did my hair, I definitely tweaked it a little bit. Like very small things that other people probably wouldn't notice, but I really did. Even my lipstick, I used my own lipstick and liner because I'm just so particular about that. I wore honestly what I wear every single day. The KKW Beauty Nude Liner in the shade. I think I wore Nude 1 on my wedding. I alternate between Nude 1 and Nude 2, but I think I wore Nude 1. And then the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Matte Liquid Lip in the color Swag. That is my jam. I will take that to the grave. Fave Nude Nails. I can only wear nudish colors to work, but I'm always looking for new shades. This is a good question. For starters, I would recommend a French manicure because Again, they are totally back in style, and I think that would be considered a nude manicure. It's very neutral. Some people might not even realize that they're painted. After that, do light pinks count? OPI, It's a Girl, one of my favorite light pinks. Uh, what others for nudes? Oh, Olive in June has a ton of really great light pink and nudish shades. I'm looking at my wall over here. Mimosas for the Mr. and Mrs. I gave that nail polish to all of my bridesmaids when I asked them to be my bridesmaid. That's a good nude. OPI's Tiramisu for two. That's a great nude as well. OPI's kind of got you covered. I'm trying to think of what else. That's where I would start. If anyone has any great nude shades for her, leave it in the comments so we can all be in the know. Next question. Best thing you spent money on for your wedding and something you regret spending money on? Ugh, I feel like I should save these wedding questions, but I did ask you to submit them. Oh wait, back to the nudes real quick. This is a great nude, I think. So far I'm really loving it. I kind of want to do three coats though. Uh, best thing I spent money on? I'm going to answer it. One of my favorite things about our wedding was our invitations. Not the invitations themselves, but the envelopes. We had them all calligraphied, everyone's address. They were so beautiful. We had gold calligraphy on white envelopes, and then we did a postage story. So I think we had a total of five stamps on each envelope. And each stamp just kind of represented something about us and our relationship, so as close to it as possible. So there was one that was like a music thing because we really love music. Um, there was one of a lake. We live in a lake community. One said love. Another was a flower. More. Oh, one was a Connecticut stamp of a huge sailboat and we were getting married on the Connecticut shoreline. So I thought that combined with the calligraphy was just amazing. I am obsessed obsessed with our invitations and when you received it I just feel like you knew you were receiving something special. It was definitely pricier but I absolutely loved loved that. Um, as for something I wish we didn't spend money on, we actually 
since I'm talking about invitations, I'll just stick with this. We had the envelopes of our invitation lined and it was gorgeous what we had done, but we ended up using a wax seal on the back. So when you opened it, like you opened it with a letter opener, you couldn't really open it like a regular invitation. So I feel like a lot of people didn't even get to see the lined envelope. So it was kind of just a waste for us. So I would say that was probably something that I wish I didn't spend money on. But I can answer this question again in terms of like the actual day and event when I share the wedding Q&A because I'm sure there's a couple more things I could think of. Bridal shower rehearsal dinner dresses. Um, I'm guessing this is what dresses I wore. I'll insert pictures here. My bridal shower dress, I had this specific dress in mind. I wanted this dress like more than anything. So there used to be this self-portrait dress a few years ago that they don't really make anymore and it was a midi dress. I loved it but I honestly wanted something a little shorter and I don't know the gods were looking out because I found like the exact dress on Poshmark. It was brand new um, and it was a shorter version. It was a knockoff of the self-portrait dress and I bought it immediately. The woman was so sweet. She shipped it to me right away. It was either a medium or a large. It definitely wasn't going to fit me. I brought it to an incredible tailor in the next town and he completely made the dress work for me. Um, it was a little sheer, so I had to buy a slip for underneath it, but I loved that dress. And then for my rehearsal dinner, I absolutely loved this dress. I honestly felt so pretty at my rehearsal dinner. Um, I forget where I ordered it. I have to look through my email, but it was, I think I saw it on an Instagram ad or something. So I ordered it, it fit perfectly. It was all like ruched, so it really kind of made me feel very confident. It was definitely fitted off the shoulder, and I paired it with these gorgeous like rhinestone chain link heels. Ugh. I saw those on an Instagram ad as well. I actually bought the heels before the dress because I fell so in love with them. I will link both of those below. I will say the heels weren't very comfortable and they were so tall, but they were beautiful and I absolutely loved that outfit. Would you do a tutorial for gel overlays? Yes, I can totally do that because I don't think I've ever done one. I feel like I did one in a live once, but I've never done a full overlay tutorial, so I can try to work on that. I always say I want to do these things and then I end up forgetting, so the more you remind me, the better it is. And I do so many swatches for other companies that I don't always get to do the manicures that I want to do, so it's hard working that into my schedule and content. So when I get the time, I promise I'll try to do that. It's really, really simple. I'll link the video where I did do it below because I have shared it before in the past. Are you on Goodreads? Can we add you? I am on Goodreads, but I don't use Use it very much. I just kind of add all the books that I've read so I can keep track. I don't really review them or like utilize their lists and stuff, but yeah, you can definitely add me. I have no idea what my username is, but I'll look it up and I'll put it in the description as well. Any tips on how to start self tanning? Yes, sure. Got you with all the tips. Um, there's actually a bunch of videos on my channel sharing how I self tan and some of my tips, but a few would be if you're going to start, start with a mousse. I love Bally Body. They're probably one of my favorite self tanners. Coco and Eve is good. I have a coupon code for them. I'll put it here. Tan Wise is really great as well, but any of the mousses. And if you're starting, I would recommend using a tinted mousse so that you can see where you're applying. It just really helps guide the application as opposed to a clear one where you don't exactly know. And then use a mitt. You've got to use a mitt. If a kit you buy doesn't come with a mitt, there's an excellent one on Amazon that I always recommend. I'll link that below as well. But a mousse and a mitt, that would be two of my main tips. There's so many more, but I think there might be a video on self tanning tips. If there is, I'll link that below, but those are two of the musts. Are the monthly bulletins coming back? I'm guessing you mean my monthly newsletter, which I was just so ambitious to want to have a newsletter this year. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. Let me get a Q-tip real quick. I have really good intentions and I get very excited about things, but sometimes I just overestimate how much time, energy, and I don't know, ability I have to do things. And the newsletter was something that for some reason became very challenging for me to keep up with. So yes, I definitely want to come back with it. I just need to figure out a better way to do it and to keep up with it. If you have any suggestions, let me know. If there were certain parts of it that you really loved, let me know. If there is something that I didn't do in the newsletter that you would like me to, let me know. But I do want to come back with that probably for fall. Maybe I'll do a September or October one and share some like exclusive behind the scenes, either wedding stuff and product stuff because there is a lot coming up 
and a lot to share. Does it feel very different now that you're married? Yes and no. It feels different in like the best ways. Our day to day life doesn't really feel different, but yeah, calling someone your husband is very different. I barely got used to fiance. The other day I referred to Dan as my boyfriend. I was like, oh, my boyfriend, oh my God, no, he is my husband. Um, but it feels great. It feels just like right. It feels comfortable. It feels like where I'm meant to be right now. I don't know how to explain it, but it just feels very good. I honestly thought about making a whole video about post-wedding relief because I'm telling you, I had such a hard time during wedding planning, like the whole year, but really towards the end, like the last four-ish months. It was so challenging for me. Mentally, I won't even get into it, but it was too much. I don't deal with anxiety well or stress and my levels were at an all-time high. So in that sense, I feel very different in a very good way now that I'm married. Um, Favorite healthy weeknight dinner? Girl, if you follow me on IG, you know I love my chopped salads. I am a chopped salad fanatic. When I get to the grocery store and I properly meal plan, we have chopped salads probably at least two nights a week, but I just like to throw everything in them. So I chop up my lettuce really small, add some kind of protein. I'll add any veggies, beans, some cheese, maybe some nuts. Um, just load them up with all the good things and they're my favorite thing to eat. And they're really pretty. I have a whole bubble on my IG of my salads. If you want some inspo, there's a ton there. What is next for you content and work-wise? Content, I have a lot of really great things coming up. I have a whole video about changing my name and some really great tools and kits that other ladies who are looking to do the same can keep an eye out for. Like I never heard of this company. Um, but we're gonna be collaborating and I'm so excited about it. Definitely some wedding content before the boat has sailed. Obviously all the Manny content, new products, new reviews. There's just so much I wanna do always at all times, but if you have anything specific you wanna see, let me know. And then work-wise, again, I've been preparing to launch my oil, which is coming, I promise. I hate like being that person who's like, it's coming, it's coming, but it is coming. It really is, it's just been such a journey and deciding to launch that in the middle of wedding planning was like the dumbest thing I could have ever done, but the product is done, it's incredible. I moved to a new manufacturer. I moved on to my third manufacturer in July. So like just a couple months ago because the last one just wasn't delivering what I needed and or wanted. So I moved on to like a way better company. I'm so excited. My contact there is incredible. She's like jumping through hoops for me and I really hope we can get that out soon. I. Ideally wanted to launch it before the holiday season, get it ready for Black Friday. I don't know if it's gonna happen. It's like an eight week production time, we're really cutting it close, but it is possible. So if it doesn't, stay tuned next year, it'll be coming, but I'm working on it guys. There's just so much going on and I have other commitments right now that require my attention and it's hard for me to just put those aside. I really have to prioritize them, so we're doing our best. Okay, just a few more. Best gel light, I answered this earlier. Let me do one more. Uh, what Manny did you do for your wedding? Now, I have to apologize. I apologized in my last video because I did not do a Manny with me for my wedding like I said I would. It just, it was that day. I was gonna do it the Thursday before my wedding. We got married on a Saturday and my mom and I actually left because it was out of town. So we went to the hotel Thursday night to kind of bring a bunch of the stuff up and prep our welcome bags and just get a lot of things off of our plate so we didn't have to rush around Friday morning so we could just enjoy that day. And we really did enjoy that day. I've got to recap that. I'm gonna do a whole wedding weekend recap because I just have so many funny pictures and moments and yeah, it's totally gonna happen. But where was I going? Oh, so we were gonna be out of town Thursday and I didn't wanna bring my gel lamp and everything to the hotel because the car, I'm telling you, was loaded to the brim to begin with. I could have put one more thing in my mom's car if I tried. So I ended up doing my nails that morning at home, like by myself in like a mad haste because it was like the only time I had to do them. So I went and got my hair done first thing in the morning. I came home, I did my nails, then I packed and then we went up and, and did all that stuff. So I apologize for the live Manny, but I ended up using Gelish. I feel flowerful. It's just a beautiful light pink. I didn't want anything crazy. I didn't want any design. I just wanted a light pink. And that is one of the colors that I always gravitate towards. So I did that. And then you saw the pink on my toes, which looked way better when I first did it. So my nails and toes didn't match, but I really love them. I actually did an Acra Gel Manny. So I did a coat of the foundation, dipped it in acrylic powder, filed it down, and then proceeded with the gel manicure. I just wanted my nails to be a little stronger than normal 
normal for the wedding and the honeymoon. Halfway through the honeymoon though, they started to lift probably because we were just like in the sand and ocean so much that they've seen better days at that point. So it started like ripping my hair out. It was driving me nuts. So when we got home that night, I immediately removed that manicure. And then the first thing the next morning I did these and they've been holding up so, so well. They're in like incredible shape. Pretty obsessed with this mani. So that is it. That is it for this video. That is it for this pedicure. I don't know if you could see it, but it looks so good. I'm loving this polish. I am loving this color. It's like peachy. It almost matches this perfectly. I'll show you on the camera in a sec. So good. Obsessed. That's it. I'm going to be out of town this coming week, but I'll be active on IG. I also have another great giveaway launching next week with Michael's Jewelers, the jewelry store that created my beautiful wedding band. Um, that's going to be awesome. I'll talk more about that in my wedding video as well. Oh yeah, leave me any wedding questions below. That's it. I'm in such a good mood now because my toes are done. I can't even tell you. Like, they were so bad. All right, you guys are the best. Thank you for your patience these last two months. I'm so happy to be back and getting into the swing of things. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you in my next one. Ow!